Zero Trust Security has gotten very popular in the past few years, but why? And what even is Zero Trust? The best way to answer those questions is to understand what problem Zero Trust is trying to solve. So let's go back in time. The year is 2005, and our friend Joe is at work in his company's office. When he logs into his computer, he's connected to his company's network, where he can access the tools he needs. But what if Joe needs to work from home? No problem. He can remotely connect to the network using a VPN, which keeps his traffic secure. Things are going great. Now, fast forward to 2024. These days, Joe doesn't go into the office. He works from home, where he has his company-issued computer, plus a lot of personal devices. Joe still needs to get on his company's VPN for some tasks, but he can log into most of his work apps from any device, as long as he has his username and password. This setup is convenient for Joe, but it's also convenient for bad actors who can steal Joe's credentials and use them to sneak onto the company's apps. That's why the first tenet of Zero Trust Security is user identity. To be sure a user is who they say they are, companies use multi-factor authentication that's tough to fish. They also monitor traffic for suspicious activities, like a user logging in from an unusual location. With strong authentication, we're confident that Joe isn't a bad actor, but he can still let hackers in and sensitive data out thanks to all those devices. Hackers can take over Joe's personal devices by infecting them with malware, or they can go the old-fashioned way and literally take them. That's why the second tenet of Zero Trust is device posture making sure that a device meets a company's security standards before giving it access to resources. Companies solve this by managing devices. Joe's work computer is managed through the company's MDM, which keeps the operating system up to date, the firewall on, and lets the company remotely wipe it if it's lost or stolen. Unfortunately, the MDM has limited capabilities, and it can't do anything on Joe's personal, unmanaged devices. Device trust tools like Collide help solve those problems. Finally, even with tools that solve for user authentication and device posture, hackers sometimes get in. At that point, the company's goal is to limit the damage an attacker can do. So the final tenet of zero trust is the principle of least access. One way of solving that is role-based access control, only letting Joe access the resources he needs to do his job. Another is continuous adaptive trust, in which the company decides what Joe can do based on how confident they are about his identity and device posture. Zero Trust is a response to the security challenges of remote work and cloud-based apps. And as long as there are workers like Joe, there will be a need for Zero Trust. If you want to learn more, visit OnePassword.com.